is going on guys? Jesse504 here. Back at him once again. LVT week one. Uh, trying to brush off from last season where we unfortunately barely missed out of playoffs. But I'm going to blame that to like a rough sort of start learning the format. So hopefully this week we show that uh, season one, the experience paid off. This week uh, we face off against... Gage, coach of the Memphis Primates. Um, yeah, uh, so week one, uh, in case you missed, oh, one last thing, PRs, uh, I've just been incredibly busy, haven't found like a time to set up, record them, so they probably won't be coming, uh, at least for a little bit, but um, going into our roster, in case you did miss the draft breakdown, uh, Lee, uh, we got Zashin, Mewtwo, Tornti, Garchomp, Incineroar, Rotomo, Vaporeon, Galarian, Corsola, Passimian, Vanillux, and Komala. Um, so it's probably one of the stronger rosters in the league, just because Zashin and Mewtwo are like such incredible threats, and then really anything on our team can come. Uh, so that's that's just like part of why this team I think is a top-notch team. But moving on, next team we got the Memphis Primates roster. Uh, their team top six as usual, the ones that I could see coming most likely being Mel Metal, um, Kyogre, Mega Swampert, Zekrom, Porygon Two, and Darmanitan. And then the roster also has Sock, Cofagrigus. Whiskash, Tapulele, and Dotler. Um, really, uh, if anything were to come, I could see uh, Wishcast and Dotler aren't coming. I think that Kyogre is definitely coming, Zekrom is definitely coming. But then, like, I think between Melmetal, uh, I think Melmetal um, and Mega Pert are also very likely. And then Darm as well, but Kofagrigus could come try to maybe uh, beat Zacian. Uh it can't spoiler alert it take it everything is too hikayed by Zacian. but um Sock could be like bait for Zacian to sort of counter a uh, sturdy counter and then Lele uh, is just a strong mon he could see that but he doesn't want to be given my Mewtwo free terrain so that is sort of his roster but let's go into the first Pokemon, and what else would it be other than Zosh and C? Um, uh, EVs this, or, um, yeah, ev this week, uh, 48 attack adamant was enough to two hit Cofagrigus after leftovers. Uh, max HP, max defense, nature. And Behemoth Blade, play rough, close combat, and substitute. So substitute, this thing obviously forces a crap ton of switch-ins. Um, or... It forces switch outs into like the potentially one only like Zacian check on their team. This thing six O's every single time. Um, but 48 attack was all I needed, and then I can go max HP and then the 60 spadef. Uh, I get two a KO'd by Zekrom Earth Power. Uh, max special attack was the significance behind that one. Then just dump the rest into defense because I didn't need any speed. Uh, this is a very like. Really slow roster, uh, capping out at 95 with Darmanitan and um, Darmanitan and Lele. So uninvested, Zashin outspeeds base 100, um, and he does not even hit that on his team, which is potentially just something messed up in the builder, but or in the draft planning stages. But yeah, we're looking to exploit that with the Zashin. But up next. Sort of catch all best revenge killer no matter what Mewtwo. Um bring in Scarfed this week uh, 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 from Fatty Jones's recommendation. Um outspeeds Scarf Ogre, which is an uh, large threat. Outspeeds Mega Pert in Rain, another massive threat. Uh, outspeeds Scarf Darn. So those are kinda all the things that I saw. The speed um, with modest nature uh, allows me to outspeed Mega Pert in Rain. Jolly. Um, and then moves Energy Ball, Expanding Force, Fire Blast, and Shadow Ball. He has a Lele on his roster. If there's Psychic Terrain, I'm going to be trying to hit that up. Uh, and then 
like if there's not no big deal expanding force is still just a solid move without it's 80 as opposed to 90 base power that we would get off of psychic and then uh psy strike uh is like a psy shock and when mons are forced to run almost completely fizzed up for zashin anyways i'm probably not going to be able to bring that move too often but then energy ball is for kyogre and swampert and then shadow ball is for Kofagrigus and Lele. And then Fire Blast is for Melmetal. And so that's kind of all the coverage that I really felt like I needed. Uh, I was originally Aura Sphere over Fire Blast, because that also gave me P2. But P2 just gets chunked anyways, so no real need. Um, up next, uh, we got the Rotom. Uh, this uh, spread... Uh, you can ask me what it does, what it does, I cannot tell you. Uh, it was really smart when I was making it, but now I don't remember. Defog, Leap Storm, Volt Switch, and Will-O-Wisp. In the mocks, it kind of was a little bit underwhelming, but one cannot deny that on paper, its matchup is great. Um, so I had to bring it. Um, Defog, uh, is real nice just in case, like, he tries to bring Dollar to set webs. I feel like those could potentially cripple the team. Leaf Storm, obviously, uh, for Kyogre and for Swampert, and then Volt Switch for Momentum, and Will-O-Wisp can catch Swampert, it can catch Melmetal, those are the two big things that it can get, because Melmetal pretty much walls anything that this can do. Um, he also has some, uh, Zekrom, Zekrom it can catch. Uh, yeah, uh, I feel like Zekrom is the biggest threat this week, or Kyogre, but, um, Kyogre has, like, Water Spout, obviously, which is an incredibly strong move in the rain. And then, I have Vaporeon to be immune to that. Uh, up next, Vaporeon, um, with pretty much max defense, a little bit of speed to creep, um, something that was trying to come up, but Flip Turn, Wish Protect, and Toxic, um, with impish nature um so we're just basically trying to take hits and wish pass uh that's really all this vaporeon is this is one big pool of hp um it's great for a slow momentum uh to flip turn out into zashin or into mewtwo um which can pretty much just consistently claim kills every time but also trying to be a primary kyogre switch in Although, a, there is a move called Thunder, um, which does completely, totally destroy this thing. But it's also just the primary Melmetal check and primary Darmanitan check. Um, I might switch this to Rocky Helmet, in fact, but I don't think I will. Um, my team just deals with Melmetal very well anyways, so no real need to do that. Uh, up next, we got Tornadus. Um, Hurricane, U-Turn, Knockoff, and Toxic. Just kind of a, um, really looking at my team, this on paper looks like the only thing I can lead, which is really great at catching uh, my opponent, I feel, because I feel like 99% of the time they are leading Scarf Darm or Zekrom if they want to be smart and try to catch this thing, which really, um, I did not bring my ground type this week, I'm trying to remember on my roster what exactly that is, um, I didn't bring my Garchomp this week, um, so uh, there isn't really like one save designated lead that I could bring, but um, this thing is, uh, it looks like the solid designated lead. Hurricane is nice when he's giving me the rain uh, to just help me out a lot. Uh, knockoff is obviously a great uh, move just to have. Uh, getting rid of items is really powerful, and then u turn for momentum, and then Toxic, uh, always nice to catch things with a toxic put them on a timer especially when like Zekrom wants to switch in it basically allows the DD set to be stalled out a little bit which is sort of all that you can really ask for um but very bulky uh this week 48 speed uh with the timid nature was all I needed to outspeed and then just got enough everywhere else and then lastly we got the ice cream cone we got Vanillux um Aurora Veil, Freeze Dry, Blizzard, and Hail. Um, Blizzard is real nice in the Hail, obviously. Freeze Dry is great to catch Swampert and Kyogre. Um, also, setting Hail is incredibly strong just to do uh, against the Kyogre team. Uh, this thing can sort of switch in on that really well. And we're really fast, I believe. We got speed for Jolly Swampert. Um, 
And then Hail is nice if he like wants to switch in the Kyogre to try to catch um like me trying to set up a veil, I can go for hard hail and then Kyogre will um lose its terrain effectively. Um so all of that is really strong. Uh all in all I really like my matchup this week. I feel like his team is not that strong. It has some things that can be taken advantage of. Like there are some individually strong Pokemon. But uh, he's going to have to Scarf or set up to really be uh, on par speed-wise uh, to my team. And I feel like I do a really good job of exploiting that. Um, but uh, I'll see you guys in the battle. Um, lead matchups, I can tell you during the thing, I was like really scared. I was like, yeah, I'll just lead Zacian. But then I was like, wait, I, I know. I kind of pussied out of the Zacian lead. And instead just opted for a more safe looking torn T lead. Uh, expecting 100% the Darmanitan, but I didn't like have the balls to call that 100% in case he led Zekrom into a torn T lead. But he just goes for Darm and Stone Edges me as I U turn out. So we're able to eat the Stone Edge, thankfully, uh, and then get into the Zacian because now he's locked in a Stone Edge. So that's a pretty free sub for me. Um, not really anything to fear uh, because I knew it was locked in a stone edge because it had speed or because it outsped. Um, water spout does a lot. I play rough it. Uh, it takes 90. Um, and then I throw out another sub because water spout's doing like 10%. So there's the sub. And then I know I'm going to go out of Kyogre with the sub as well. Um, and then. It's really nice we managed to take out Kyogre. And then out comes the Mega Swampert. Um, yeah, it Mega Evolves and goes for like an EQ and needs to break the sub. And then I just go for a Play Rough, which is a nice crit, but it doesn't matter because it's doing like 80% no crit. And then it would have lost rain. So uh, out comes the Mel Metal. Uh, I CC'd it, uh, really nothing to do about that. He goes for double iron bash, takes me out. I didn't really want to, like, switch into my Rotom there, even though I could have. Probably save some differential. Here I go out into Torn T, just getting a little bit of recovery. Uh, and then I go out into my Rotom, because double iron bash still hits for 60, so I don't really know if that is considered a safe switch in or not. But, I just Volt Switch out, uh... And then I go out into my Mewtwo because there's nothing that really wanted to take a hit from this thing. As they go into the Zekrom, and uh, I can just hit this thing with an Expanding Force. We crit again. Um, again, another crit that doesn't really end up mattering because now um, we outspeed still because of our Scarf. That really saves us. They go out into the Darm. And then I go out into my Vaporeon, I really want to be safe. They blitz me, I take 33, which is still plenty. But after Leftovers Recovery, it's fine. And then they have to go out into Lele, and I just flip turn out. Um, the, like, there's really no reason not to take the chip, even though I knew it was coming. And now here, I probably could have gone for a... Um, gone for a um, expanding force and probably just ended the game right here but I just went for a shadow ball chose to play it 100% safe in case he was like some crazy investment set but uh, I just got into my Vaporeon he blitzes me again and then I'll flip turn out again get that thing almost dead and then Mewtwo will be able to outspeed and claim the final kill uh, for a 5-0 victory. Um, yeah. So, pretty clean. I feel like I definitely exploited the weaknesses of his team. But, all in all, that was just like an incredibly fast battle. It took 18 turns. Um, I feel like my team was just really ready to dismantle his team. Like, that substitute on Zacian, I feel like, played a pretty... Uh, pretty good this week um because obviously once that Kyogre was because like I would have lost uh Zacian to the first Kyogre water spot if I wasn't behind a sub 
but I took it down to 10%, and then it wasn't a threat anymore. Um, and then I probably could have saved some differential by going Rotom on the Melmetal, but uh, then I would have had to like go Rotom, Volt Switch into Vaporeon, and then my Vaporeon doesn't really have anything to touch the Melmetal, so it would just be kind of uh, an unnecessary pain. And I didn't think that, like, I felt just, like, losing Zosh in there would be probably the cleanest way. Because, um, it really just guaranteed the win, I felt. Uh, at least it kept up, like, my momentum while I did lose Zosh in. Uh, the momentum on my side, it was still helping out. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, until next time, Jesse504, out. Peace.